In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, it's always a privilege for us to come to celebrate the Holy Eucharist as we come to encounter our Lord Jesus Christ in His Word, as well as in the form of bread and wine. And as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we pray for the following intentions, for uh, thanksgiving and intentions of the Lord Father family. And we also pray for the eternal repose of the soul of Bernard Barrios, who is remembered first death anniversary. And for us to be less unworthy for this celebration, we now humble ourselves before the Lord, aware of our weakness and sins, we ask the Lord for the gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Here, brothers, is the news of the grace of God which was given in the churches in Macedonia and of how, throughout great trials by suffering, their constant cheerfulness and their intense poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity. I can swear that they gave not only as much as they could, but far more, and quite spontaneously begging and begging us for the favor of sharing in this service to the saints. And what was quite unexpected, they offered their own selves first to God and under God to us. Because of this, we have asked Titus since he has already made a beginning to bring this work of mercy to the same point of success among you. You always have the most of everything, of faith, of eloquence, of understanding, of keenness for any cause, and the biggest share of our affection. So we expect you to put the most into this work of mercy too. It is not an order that I am giving you. I am just testing the genuineness of your love against the keenness of others. Remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich, but he became poor for our sake to make you rich out of his poverty. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, our response, Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my days, make music to my God while I live. Praise the Lord, my soul. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. Praise the Lord, my soul. It is he who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, 
the Lord who sets prisoners free. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are loved, who are bowed down. The Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and the orphan. Praise the Lord, my soul. We stand to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, You have learned how it was said, You must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In this way you will be sons of your Father in heaven, for he causes his Son to rise on bad men as well as good, and his rain to fall on honest and his honest men alike. For if you love those who love you, what right have you to claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much, do they not? And if you save your greetings for your brothers, are you doing anything exceptional? Even the pagans do as much, though they not. You must therefore be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. It's very interesting listening to the first reading how people are so enthusiastic and interested in the learning the faith about the goodness and even begging Paul and the others to uh, say more about the goodness and so it's assigning titles so it's uh, how we can imagine the uh, enthusiasm of the early uh, uh, believers and converts during those times how enthusiastic they are in wanting to learn more which of course uh, uh, it's an it's an encouragement to us too that uh, we may have that kind of interest. Nowadays, of course, people are concerned about a lot of things. But during those times, I guess this is the, to listen to the word of God and to know more about the goodness is the is the uh, the, the the best thing to to have or to to learn. That's why for them it's important for them to learn more. That's what they're interested now. Of course, people are concerned about a lot of things, and uh, instead of now, instead of uh, wanting to learn more or to listen some more, people will say, "Yeah, you say a lot. Do you stop?" So we have to shorten our homilies because people would not listen more. And like perhaps during the time of Saint Paul, even the Acts of the Apostles, that they talk for a long time, and people are interested to listen. Nowadays, well. Perhaps they are, people are more interested in other things rather than the goodness. And of course, that, uh, well, uh, uh, the uh, first reading that the enthusiasm of first Christians will also uh, guide us to understand the, the uh, gospel reading in a way to become perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And Jesus was saying, well, to love those who love you is, well, there is nothing exceptional of that. To treat those who treat you well, is, there is nothing exceptional. That is an instinctive love. But in fact, even nowadays, people seem to have no more common sense or instinct. Because unless you recognize your love, you can respond well. But some people do not even respond to, to the beauty of grace and of love of God. And he would even ignore everything. He would not even respond. But that kind of love is what we may call instinctive love. It's just like animals. If you show, if they understand that you love them, you care for them, they will, uh, they will respond to you. You know how to tame dogs, for example. If you train them, they understand that you care for them, you love them, they will love you back. That's why you can train snakes too. 
because that's how that's instinct. So human beings should be more than that. So Jesus is saying, how about loving and praying for those who have hurt you? Enemies here is not really the eternal enemy. Enemies here would mean the people who in a way discomfort you or maybe even hurt you. Of course, we have to work for justice if there's a need to work for that. But Jesus is saying you can do more than instinctive love and you can do more than just working for justice. You can pray for those who have hurt you that they can that they may convert them, they become better persons. And uh, of course, that's, that's uh, more than just uh, uh, just responding to what you've done. So included here, of course, is the forgiveness and uh, uh, treating them better than, uh, of course, uh, uh, than just responding or even re taking revenge. So this is a, a higher level of morality in a way that even when we are hurt, we still pray for those who have hurt us, that they realize what they have done and change and become better persons and even pray for them. So here Jesus said, at the end, you must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. In other words, perfection here is not about the power, it's, a, it's about love. Perfection here is about love because that is how God loves us. He loves us even how weak we are, how we, have, may, we may have offended him, but he loves us. So that is perfection. So when Jesus said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, he himself also exemplified what it means to be perfect by manifesting his love to us, offering himself for us, for our salvation. As we continue to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let's be thankful uh, for God for manifesting his love to us. We may respond, we may uh, have instinctive response to that love, but we may also have that because we are gifted with that capacity to love, uh, to, to, to intend and to pray for the good of even those who in one way or the other have hurt us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all Christ. Through your goodness, we have received this bread to offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received this wine to offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For just as through your beloved Son you cried that the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the Son and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the Son and the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sanded, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, saying as Savior of the world, for by cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Vincent our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world as you Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are all to the supper of the Lamb. Prayer of Communion to those at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I always desire to receive you, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come into my heart, and I embrace you, as I believe you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. May I never be separated from you.
Let's pray. At the reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you. So may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have celebrated the Holy Eucharist. We go now in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God.